In this lecture, we will be talking about data acquisition and integration. This lecture will provide a brief overview of the material that you already should know from uh, your GIS introductory courses. So throughout this lecture, we will go fairly quickly through a lot of material uh, to refresh your memory. So if you feel that you don't understand something or that you need to know uh, a little bit more about the topic, I will give you some references or you can find uh, the material in some introductory GIS books. So the first section will talk in this first section we will talk about uh, mapping and about different methods for data acquisition. There are many mapping technologies and I'm sure that you have uh, already worked with data that were acquired by different types of these technologies. Probably the most widespread are the data that are obtained from uh, aerial and satellite sensors. Then another method are different types of on-ground surveys such as real-time kinematic GPS or some of the modern methods such as laser scanner. So here are some examples of satellite, uh, satellite sensors, satellite data that you may uh, uh, work with. One of the data that we will be using in this course are SRTM data, that's shuttle radar topography mission, and I will show it uh, uh, later and in some of the uh, assignments we will talk and describe uh, talk about this data and describe them in more detail. Another data that we will work with are airborne data, both photogrammetric data, some orthophotos, and the LIDAR data that provide very detailed three-dimensional information. So here we have examples of satellite data. Uh, one of the examples that I have already mentioned are the SRTM data that provide global coverage of uh, elevation data at least at 90 meter resolutions and the data were actually collected at higher resolutions. So for example, if you are working on international project in areas that don't have uh, local publicly available data, uh, SRTM uh, elevation models are usually the, the data that you would use. Here is another example of very common, widely, ava widely publicly available satellite data, and that's Landsat imagery. Here are examples of airborne remote sensing data, and actually those uh, uh, examples from our data set that we will be using in our assignments. Uh, here is the airborne laser scanning. Uh, we will talk about it uh, more when we will be talking about mapping topography. And here you can see that in those areas that don't have, uh, the, that have just grass, that have just plain cover, uh, we have uh, fairly dense coverage, but only a single uh, layer of points. In those areas that are forested, that have some uh, substantial vegetation, we will have multiple return data so we can map not only the bare ground but we can also map the structure of vegetation. So then there are many methods for ground-based uh, data collection and here are some examples. Uh, here is a comparison uh, between satellite imagery and ground-based imagery. Uh, here is the building where we are, Jordan Hall, uh, from satellite, and uh, you can then compare the kind of information that you get from the satellite and that you can get from the ground-based imagery. So here you see the footprint, here you don't get any information about the footprint. On the other hand, this, um, this type of imagery gives you uh, gives you the information about vertical structure of the vertical features such as walls of the buildings which you don't have here and uh, <clears throat> so here is the view this is the location from which we are looking at this building uh, 
another type of ground-based data acquisition. I have already mentioned real-time kinematic surveys. They can be mounted on different types of vehicles. Here we have a very special type of mapping. Uh, mapping, uh, we are in a coastal area, so this is mapping of uh, North Carolina beaches uh, using real-time kinematic surveys mounted on um, ATVs, uh, gathering very important information about uh, performance, for example, of beach nourishment. Here is real-time kinematic survey mounted and, uh, and uh, uh, single beam sonar mounted on the uh, on the jet ski uh, for mapping in in a very shallow uh, shallow nearshore areas where the big ships with uh, with sonars can't get. Again, gathering very important information for studying the uh, studying the coastal erosion and coastal dynamics. And the data from this type of equipment would look like this, these black, uh, black dots. So you can see that they are very dense along the path of the, uh, of the mapping. And those gray points, uh, uh, gray points are actually LIDAR data. So you can see that the LIDAR data are much, much denser than what you can get from the real-time kinematic survey. But of course, real-time kinematic survey is much cheaper. And this is how uh, on-ground laser scanner looks like. And this would be the type of data that you get. And this looks like an imagery, but it's not an imagery. It's a set of points. And the, uh, and the gray shade is intensity, laser intensity. So now we get either imagery or we get a set of points. And to get them into GIS, we need to uh, go through several steps. First of them, very important one, is georeferencing. Fortunately, georeferencing is uh, now usually done in real time during mapping using the GPS technology. Then another very often more time consuming uh, part of the work is feature extraction. That means that you get the image or you get the points, but to actually use it, you need to extract, for example, roads, buildings, vegetation. So that's another big part of the work. And then you need to build the GIS data model to represent these features. And they can be represented either as raster data or vector data. And we will explain the difference and we will show some examples. <laughs> 